are two universal truths that everyone agrees on. One, motorbikes are awesome. Two, The Legend of Zelda, also awesome. So back in the day when I saw this, I knew I was going to have to make a sculpture of it. Wait, no, not that one. You think I'd have a hope of sculpting that? That's better. Anyway, it's only taken me about 8 years to get around to do it. But that Tears of the Kingdom gameplay video just came out, so let's say this week's video is tied to that. Yeah, yeah that works. Carl, you're the master of timing. So two episodes back we made a kit bash of the Master Cycle itself. Click the link above if you missed it. So this week we're going to make just everything else. There's so much. But we'll start by making the main man himself. Most of my head sculptures start off by looking just the worst. Absolutely terrible. And this one is no different. But like they say, you have to trust the process. And after many hours of resisting the urge to quit and screaming at the clay, you just hope that something decent comes out the other end. But after we've baked his face to lock in his link look, we'll dremel out a little hole in the back, and then glue in some armature wire which will make it easier to attach the head to the rest of the body. Now, Link is a little fella. Oh, sorry, that's not very kind, is it? Okay, Link is slightly vertically challenged, so it kind of looks like he's sprawled all over the master cycle in some kind of crab attack pose. But it'll make sense, hopefully, once we attach his body to the bike. Here we're going to make Link's signature chainmail that pokes out from underneath his tunic the easiest way I know possible, which is basically to stab a load of holes in some rolled out clay. And once we've done that, we can start to mark out where all his straps are going to go. You see, this version of Link doesn't have those bottomless pit Mary Poppins pockets that he normally has, so he has to store all his equipment in an enormous backpack hence the straps. And in a nod to the Ocarina of Time Link, which is the first Zelda game I played, we're going to put those square pouch thingies across his bandolier. After that we'll give him a little belt around his waist, before starting to build up his bike hardened booty. Then we can blend in some non-wormy dealies wormy dealie sausages into his trousers to add some creases. And after adding some gauntlets to his arms, we'll attach the hands. Then we'll start to bulk up his Breath of the Wild style thick mop of hair before adding his cap to the back of his head. Now I realise that the likelihood of Link's cap staying on his head while driving at speed is slim to say the least, but just suspend your disbelief for a moment, because it looks cool. Then the sculpting part of Link is pretty much done. All that's left to do is to give him his signature earring, which I've made by curling a small piece of armature wire. And yes, I know Link normally has two earrings, but it was difficult enough to make the one, so let's say it's part of that Ocarina of Time 90s vibe. Next up we'll make some bokoblins that are chasing Link across the treetops. To mix things up we'll start by making their torsos, and somewhere in the process of making them, I realised that I hadn't been looking at much reference material. Then I realised why, I was basically making a self-portrait. But mentally crushing realisations aside, after a few hours we had these two handsome fellas. One of which is on a platform raining down fiery terror upon Link, and the other is clearly a member of Riverdance. Now we'll move on to the painting stage, and these three dudes desperately need a coat of black primer. Well that was easy. Since this is a nighttime scene with very stark lights and shadows, I decided to overspray some white, which would replicate the light being cast onto these models. It's largely a pointless exercise because I won't be doing any form of contrast painting or glazing, so the white won't show through once it's painted, but it's a good frame of reference for me personally. Next we'll start laying on the base colours. Firing Arrow Dude will be your standard reddish brown Bokoblin colour while Irish Jig Guy will be kind of a grey bluish green. After having dry brushed on some lighter shades to emphasise their wrinkly bits, we can use various shades of pinks and purples to colour up their mouths, before going back over their very British smiles with some ivory paint on their teeth. Then using more different shades of pink, yellow and white, we can build up their freakish glowing eyes, which incidentally is also very British. Then we'll seal those eyes in with a shiny coat of UV resin, and the camera will decide it wants to give you a focused in glamour shot of his bow just about here. But I feel at this stage that Riverdance Guy needs more fluff in his life. 
So we'll coat his sash thing in a layer of PVA glue. And then using this brownie grey flocking I had to hand, we'll give him a layer of static grass, or in this case, fur. Then just to take his grossness to the next level, let's give him some sweaty paintbrush bristle armpit hair. Man, the sentences that come out of my mouth to make these videos, it's ridiculous. But his armpit hairs are looking a little bit too free and flowing, so we'll trim them down before giving them a brown wash to blend them in. Then finally he'll get some black animal dots added to his sash. Thankfully we can now move on to painting Link in his classic green, before painting his backpack in a light tan colour. We can then darken it a bit and emphasise all the recesses and creases using a brown contrast, and then go back over it with a dry brush of the same light tan. Now we can get on to painting Link's dreamy blue eyes. We'll start with a base of sky blue, and then outline it with a navy blue. We'll use the same navy blue to simulate a bit of contrast and depth in the top part of his eye, touch up the bottom half with a slightly lighter blue again, and then paint in the pupils. Finally I'll add a little white dot to suggest light reflection. A lot of people skip this step because when they put UV resin over the eye the glossiness of the resin gives it that kind of light reflection, but I like to bake the effect in before putting the UV resin on. To me it just brings the eyes a bit more to life. Speaking of airbrushing effects in, we'll now go ahead and airbrush some light blue and white paint onto the side of the backpack just where this hole is. Why am I doing that? Well, off camera, I made this fairy jar with a blue LED installed, and the blue paint will hopefully give the idea that light is coming out the fairy and bouncing onto the backpack. Now, I did make a whole fairy out of translucent clay and put it into resin, which became the jar, the whole shebang, but at the end of the day, you couldn't really see the fairy too well through the resin, so you'll have to take my word for it. But you can sleep easy at night knowing that it's there. Now at the moment, Paul Link has some nasty looking LED wires coming out of his backpack and worse still, coming out of his butt. But fear not, because when we sit him on his motorbike, that will cover up his dangling wire issue. And the rest of the wires will be covered up nicely by this sword and scabbard. And with that out of the way, we can turn our attention to the base. Now I picked up this piece of wood from a local wood turning guy, and it'll make a perfect base of the base. But it's going to have a bunch of LED wiring going through it, so we'll need to gut it first. There we go, one slab of wood with all its innards taken out. <laughs> what do you mean it's bigger than the first piece of wood and looks totally different? Must be just a perspective thing I guess. Anyways, we could just leave the sides of the wood as is I guess, but that's not how we roll here in the hobby hole. So now I'm going to pass over to Mrs Hobby Hole who's going to stab loads of holes in a piece of wood with a giant hole in it. What? That's great material man, what are you on about? Yeah, that's good! Ah, oh, I can only apologise. Oh well, at least you don't have to live with it every day. And that totally was two separate bits of wood, by the way. He just forgot to show the larger piece before cutting that ginormous hole in it. Okay, so we're going to start out by marking out the design in pencil using this pair of compasses. I'm going to try to mirror the Aztec light pattern from Tears of the Kingdom. Once I'm happy with the pattern, I'm going to go over it again with a pyrography pen. And I can totally see why Carla's asked me to do this because it's taken me forever. I don't know about that, I just see it as me giving you a platform to express your creativity. Ow! Anyway, next up we'll cut some XPS foam to fit over the top of that wood, and we can start to draw out in position where we want things to go. And once everything's positioned basically in the place that we want them to be, we can start to carve out more of that road using a soldering iron. And safety warning, please always use a mask when burning foam, it gives off some nasty fumes. Now we'll figure out where we want to position our fairy lights, which will later become flaming arrows. And once we're happy with the position, we can cut out the foam and sink them into place. Then we'll blend in the tea lights with the rest of the base using some air dry clay. And whilst we're there, we can use some more clay to fill in any gaps and round the base off as a whole. Once that's dry, we can slap on with careless abandon my patent pending ground mix, which consists of sand and small rocks from the beach, brown acrylic paint, wool filler and PVA glue. How do you know when it's the right consistency? When it tastes good just like that, you know it's just right. And before you say, yes, that was just a joke, I'd never recommend eating sand and wool filler without at least putting a lot of sugar in it first. But seriously, don't ever eat any of your materials. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that and that it's a given, but just in case. Once it's semi-dry and looking like this, we can start to pat it down and shape it a bit more using a sponge. 
We can also add some other details, like horse hoof prints using this little horse hoof print tool, as well as some human footprints using this silicone shaping tool. Next we'll bust out the airbrush and give the road a good overspraying of burnt umber, after which we'll add some highlights using some light brown. And while that's drying, as a side build, we'll make a skull chest out of Breath of the Wild. We'll sketch out the basic shape on a block of XPS foam, and then cut and sand it into shape, making sure, again, to wear a mask while sanding. Off camera, we'll embed some LED lights into the eyes, and then lock it all in with some UV resin. And with that done and painted, we can move on to making the trees. For this, I'm gonna use some chunky armature wire and cut it into three long strips. Then I'll twist them around each other, making sure to leave the tops and the bottoms untwisted for the branches and the roots respectively. At this point we can add some smaller armature wire to make some branching off, well, branches. And then we'll bulk out the whole thing by wrapping it in a cosy jacket of tin foil. And around that we'll smush some more air dry clay. And apparently I'll give it a little tickle as well. What even is that? Then we can go ahead and start carving in some details. Again, whilst we wait for that to dry, we can go back to the base and anything that's not brown will get a thorough coat of black. And we'll also blast some reds, oranges and yellows around the tea lights using the airbrush. Then we'll put our trees in place, give them a coat of black, before going back to the airbrush to overspray some shades of brown. Off camera, Mrs. Hobbyhole had made us these little glow-in-the-dark mushrooms. And with all that in place, we can get to the fun part of laying down some static grass. Just like with the Bokoblin, we'll slap on a load of PVA glue, and then shake that static grass like something that shakes a lot. I don't know man, it's late and I'm running out of steam. Not all my jokes can be bangers. I mean, it would be good if any of them were, but they were. As it is, we're on the home stretch. It's just a matter of adding some little flourishes before putting it all together. So we'll just add some moss into any unsightly gaps. Sprinkle on some fake autumn leaves, which are the wrong scale but still look kind of good. And we'll lock it all in with a spray of isopropyl alcohol and PVA mixed with water. We'll remove those nasty looking fake flames on the tea lights and replace them with slightly better looking fake flames made from yellow translucent clay and oversprayed with a bit of red. Then we'll place Link on the bike, the bike on the base and start to tie it into the rest of the diorama by adding some mud flecks. To hide those nasty wires and to give the bike some much needed stability we'll add some dust clouds and some poor bloke has dropped his ice cream after seeing Link speeding past. There he is. At least he's got a mate to cheer him up. Then we'll attach to Link's backpack this familiar looking mask with UV glowing eyes. And no Link is complete without his Hylian shield. Finally we'll put the Bokoblins in their place. Give the base a nice coat of wood stain. And I'd say we're just about done here. Well my friends, we made it to the end of another video. Well done you, you get more and more awesome every time I see you. 
If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. A big shout out to Game Chops, who put together the music you've been hearing throughout this video. They do awesome lo-fi remixes of video game music. Please go to gamechops.com or check out their YouTube channel if you want to see more. And while you're there, why not check out these other awesome YouTube channels appearing on your screen right now? They create some awesome stuff and are truly an inspiration. I'm going to aim to have another video out much sooner than it took me to do this one, so please look forward to that. I think I'm going to do something Mario related. I can't think why. I think there's something happening this month, but I can't remember. But until the next one, cheers and have a good one.